four, three. Well, welcome to the Sustainable Success Radio Show. Hope everyone is having a wonderful week the Sustainable Success way. Uh, we are having a great week here in the New York City area. We hope the same for you. If you are new to Sustainable Success, you found us here at the Voice America Influencers Channel, but you can also check us out also on Apple Podcast as well as Spotify and our Facebook page, Sustainable Success 2017, where we have many of our great guests that have shared their words of wisdom and insights to help you not only scale your business to the next level, but also your personal lives and your own well-being. Uh, today's show is being brought to you today by My Alumni Direct. Again, that's My Alumni Direct at MyAlumniDirect.com. Again, this is a new social media platform bringing together communities of people where they can get together from their alma maters, from uh, universities to colleges to community colleges, fraternities, sororities, and even businesses that are now defunct where they can get back together to kind of rekindle old relationships and actually meet new people and perhaps find your next new job opportunity and perhaps a new business partner. Again, check them out at myalumnidirect.com. Today's show is going to be a great one. We have a, a wonderful guest, someone that I've admired for such a long time. Uh, we're here going to be with Jack Canfield today, and we're going to be talking about uh, some insights from a book that he had put out with another author, Miriam Laundrie, and we're going to be talking about developing a I can mindset. And even though this was geared towards uh, children, we're going to also be applying it to also adults as well. As well. And as you know, here at Sustainable Success, we are all about mindset. Mindset is the foundation to everything that we do in terms of our success, whatever that may mean in our lives. And we're going to have some great insight from Jack. And before I introduce Jack, I'll give you a little background. Jack is an award-winning speaker and international recognized leader in personal development and peak performance strategies. As the co-creator of Chicken Soup for the Soul series, he taught millions of individuals his formulas for success. He is the author and co-author of more than 150 books, including 66 bestsellers with more than 100 million copies in print in 47 languages around the world. His best-selling book, The Success Principles, has been hailed as the new improvement classic. And without further ado, we welcome Jack Canfield to the show. Jack, how are you doing today? I'm fine, Christopher. Thank you. Well, it is such a pleasure to be here. I am so honored to have you here. I know we had Mark Victor Hansen and Crystal on here back in January, and they said, you got to get Jack on. And I said, you absolutely. We couldn't wait to have you on. I really re love the area of mindset. Mindset to me is the foundation. Like if you look at a at a house, a beautiful home you want to build or you want to sustain that home. It has to have a, a rock solid foundation. And I always equate the mindset to everything, whatever success means to people. Can we just talk about a little bit from your perspective about mindset in general, what that means? And, and I guess we're going to talk some insights from your book as it applies to children, but also we can apply it to adults as well. Sure. I, I say that success is a result of mindset, skill set, and action. So mindset is you have to believe that it's possible. You have to believe and well, take 100% responsibility for your life. A lot of us are blamers and complainers and excuse makers. We can delve down into that a little bit because I the, the first chapter in my book, The Success Principles, is called Take 100% Responsibility for Your Life and Your Results. And so many of us are we live in a, a victim consciousness where we think that somehow it's the things happening outside of us that determine our reality, determine our success, the economy, who's president, you know, the liberals, the Democrats, <laughs> the Republicans, fake news. We blame Wall Street. We blame other countries. You know, we blame the immigrants. We blame the European Union. If you live in England, if you're in the European Union, you blame Brexit for all the problems. The problem is that that doesn't change anything. I teach this formula called E plus R equals O. There's events, you have a response to that event and you get an outcome, event, response, outcome. And most people wanna blame the event instead of their response for the outcome they get. So when we had the pandemic show up, it's, it's your mindset that's determined how you approached it. If you believe that you could handle it, that you were capable and lovable and significant, and that you could handle anything that shows up, then you would have pivoted and you would have figured out, you know, like we did. We had, you know, here's, I, my company basically runs live seminars and all of a sudden we can't do that. And we've got over $800,000 in deposits for live trainings, which we either had to give back 
where we had to pivot and create online courses for people, which we did. It took us several months to do that. But, you know, I didn't want to fire my 12 staff. I wanted to make sure we all succeeded. And uh, we managed to get through that. But a lot of people went under. We said restaurants that, that went under and closed. We saw other restaurants that within two days of the shutdown orders had ordered like a thousand takeout boxes, called up all their customers, said, we're going to do takeout. You show up at six o'clock or eight o'clock. We have a prefix menu. We have a wine pairing, uh, you know, and they actually were doing 66 meals a night instead of 44 when they were open. And so again, it's the mindset that determines how you're going to go, how you're going to be. So if you believe you can, then you're going to try and you're going to succeed. If you believe you can't, you won't try. And so when we wrote this new children's book called I Can Believe in Myself, the idea was if you believe you can, you'll do it. And so many of us are living this I can't mindset. Even with the pandemic, you know, kids, I can't see my friends. I can't go to soccer practice. I can't try out for the football team. I'm not going to get a college scholarship because we're not playing intramural sports or, you know, interclassic sports this year. So all these I can't show up. I don't know if you know who W. Mitchell is. He's one of the great motivational speakers of all time, a good friend of mine. And he was burned over three quarters of his body in a motorcycle accident where they he went down, the gas tank opened up, gas went all over his body, and he burned up, except his face where he had a, a helmet on. And he literally has no hands, like the, the fingers all fused. Yeah. If you've ever seen a burn victim. And I love what he said. He said, I realized there was a thousand things I couldn't do. I couldn't play chopsticks. I couldn't eat with chopsticks. I couldn't throw a football, you know, whatever. But there were still 10,000 of things I could do. I could speak. I could read. I could watch television. I could watch movies. I could motivate people. I could meet with my friends. I could tell someone how to cook the meals I wanted, whatever. So literally whatever happens, if we have the belief that we can handle it, that we are capable and competent, then we will. It's the, uh, you know, I think it was... Um, the guy that invented the theory of evolution, he, he didn't say he didn't. A lot of people say it's the survival of the of the fittest. It, it really is. is. It's the survival of the fit in this, which means the survival of the people who adapt the most quickly. And so as, as things change, we have to adapt to them. And if you believe you can do that, then it doesn't matter what shows up. You know, you'll be able to handle it. And then you also know you can survive. Think of this. Everything that anyone listening to this show has ever experienced, you survived it. You mm -hmm. wouldn't be here if you hadn't. Yeah. And so the next thing that comes along, you have to take the attitude. If I survive that, I can survive this. And every time we take a risk and we survive it, we build our self-confidence. Self-confidence is a result of surviving a risk. And so the more risks we take because we feel we can, then the more build of confidence we have. I, I teach what I call the poker chip theory of learning and, and, and living. And I do this with kids as well. I take a bunch of poker chips and I give you 10 and I keep 100. And I say, okay, we're going to play poker. Who do you think is going to win? And everyone goes, Jack. And why? Well, Chris has only got 10 chips. He loses five <laughs> twice. He's out of the game. You know, I can go all in and you're done. You exactly. Know? So my job is to build up your sack of poker chips if I'm your parent or I'm a teacher. Uh, uh, and your job is to build up your own once you get to the point where you realize, you know, you're no longer a kid. Yeah. Let's say you get to the high school age. You're responsible for your own self-esteem, your own self-confidence, your own mindset. So there's many things around that. You want to surround yourself with positive people who believe in you. You want to read positive things, all these self-help books, Chicken Soup for the Soul books, autobiographies of famous people. You want to watch things like, you know, YouTube videos of, of people that are teaching this stuff. There's master classes. There are all kinds of, you know, every one of us that you probably ever interviewed has free videos on YouTube you could watch. Yeah. And you want to, uh, you know, believe in yourself, do affirmations, do visualization. And when you do that, then you feel invincible. And then you can go out and do anything. I, I, I'll, I'm now on a, I'm a roll right here, but I'll just say one last thing now. I'll, I'll stop for a minute and take a breath. <laughs> But I saw this quote recently from Muhammad Ali, uh, arguably one of the more successful people that ever lived. And he said, impossible is a big word used by small-minded people that would rather live in the world that other people have created than take the responsibility to create the world they want. Uh, and then he said, if you take impossible and you separate it, the I am from the possible, and you put a little apostrophe, it becomes I'm possible. I can do anything I want. So... <laughs> It's just simply a matter of choice. We can all choose to believe because belief is a choice. You can choose right now to believe anything you want. And I saw this quote the other day. It was a meme that was on the internet. It said, if you believed in Santa Claus for eight years, you could at least choose to believe in yourself for a month. 
<laughs> it's so true. You know, what I love what you said, Jack, it, you know, in, with the, it's always a choice. They're the people that are going to adapt and do what they can, the people that will choose to find the excuses and everything, why they can't do something. Right. And again, it's those people that choose to control and maximize what they can and know and let go of the rest. But right. so many people get caught up in the things that we can't control and always deflect the responsibility to, like you said, to the government, to, you know, to the job market, to whatever is going on as the excuse. What, what are some ways that, you know, obviously people are conditioned either through the media, through the way they've been brought up. Mm -hmm. It's so important that this book that you came out with, Miriam, about because the, the time to really establish these principles is during those child development years. Why is this so imperative that children learn this now as they become adults? We can change that way of thinking. Well, one of the things I've been studying really in depth for the last 10 years is beliefs. And what I've discovered is everybody has limiting beliefs. I don't care who you are. I don't care how successful you are. You still have some. And even I still uncover them sometimes when I'm in a workshop or something like that. And I'm 76 and I've been doing this work since my 20s, so 56 years of personal development. But what we know now is that most of the beliefs that are stopping people, that keep them from picking up the phone to doing a Facebook Live, to asking for the order, to asking that person to marry them or go out with them or to try out for the team, you know, or whatever it is that you're, it's, you're afraid to do, you're not doing. You know you want it, but you're not doing it. There's a belief that was formed normally between the ages of three and eight. And these are beliefs that happened when you had an emotionally strong experience. We know that whenever there's a strong emotion along with an experience, it locks it into the brain much deeper. The science behind it is that you create more proteins in the brain. Like everyone knows where they were when 9-11 happened. You know, the minute you knew where, when it happened, you know where you were. I was in my bedroom. I turned on the radio. My clock radio went off, actually. And all of a sudden, I heard Santa Barbara airports closed down. I thought there's probably an accident at the airport. So I turned on TV. And there's the, the towers all smoking and one of them had already fallen. And I remember the color pajamas I was wearing, what I did for the next four hours. My kid didn't go to school. We talked forever about it. And, um, you know, if you're old like I am, you know where you were when President Kennedy was killed. You just know why, because it was so emotionally impactful. The brain then secretes more proteins that makes the neurons thicker and they fire more often when you have a triggering thought. So we don't know why we're not doing something or why that person upsets us or why we get angry when we hear that. But it's this belief that was formed between three and eight. And these are beliefs like I'm not lovable, I'm not worthy, I don't belong, I'm not smart, I can't do math, I don't sing well, you know, I'm not athletic, whatever it might be. And there's a lot of them that show up. What happens is as adults, we don't know we have them. We just know that we hesitate to do the things we need to do to get the things we want. If we did everything we wanted to do and just did it because we wanted to get there, we'd all be successful. But yeah. the reality is those beliefs stop us. So we have to have a system or a technique to identify those beliefs. Now, if as children, we can help them form positive beliefs by, first of all, when they have traumatic experiences, asking them, well, what are you telling yourself about that? Well, no one talks to me at school. There's something wrong with me. You know, I'm a, I'm a retard, whatever. Well, the reality is that's a, a, a decision you just made that's not true. You know, you just had a bad day at school. Somebody didn't like you. You failed to get the decimal point in the right place in math class, whatever it is. And if we can help them realize that and reevaluate those experiences and then reframe it as I'm a good person, I just had something I need to learn to do better, et cetera, then what happens, they're okay. And we can teach them exercises like we have in the book, I Can Believe in Myself. It's, it's, a, it's a children's book aimed at kids, I would say, you know, anywhere from four up until about 10 years old. My uh, grandson is eight. I just read him the book recently when he visited here. Went home with his uh, signed copy from his grandfather. Actually, <laughs> actually named one of the kids in the book after him. And um, so anyway, the it's a boy. It's about a girl who has to give a talk the next day. It's kind of show and tell, and she doesn't want to do it. She says, "I can't speak in front of a large group." And and you probably noticed, Chris, but the number one fear of all Americans is public speaking. Yeah. And the number three fear is fear of death. So most people would rather die than speak in front of a large group, you know? And I, I once studied all these fears, fear of snakes, fear of drowning, fear of heights, fear of darkness. Those are all the big ones, plus, you know, the, the fear of uh, dying and fear of uh, 
of speaking. So I used to kiddingly say to my groups when I was teaching this stuff, I once had a client who had this dream, recurring dream, that he was giving a talk in the dark next to a swimming pool full of snakes on top of a tall building. But the point is, the idea is we, we have these um, fears, and the main one is speaking. So she has this. It's common. And so she brings this note to school and she tells the teacher, you know, the note says, uh, you know, yeah, Molly, yeah. Molly can't speak today. Molly's got a sore throat. So she figures she's going to get out of it. But she wrote the note herself, of course. And so the teacher says, well, I guess you won't yeah. be able to speak all day. So now Molly goes out to the playground. She realizes yeah. she can't talk or the teacher will know. So she starts noticing all the kids that are saying, I can't do the monkey bars. I can't tie my shoes. I can't swing on a swing without anyone you know, pushing me. And she starts saying, everybody has I can't. She even hears the yeah. teacher going, I can't get through the morning without my cup of coffee. So <laughs> she has this idea that she's not alone. And so she sees the teacher using this paper shredder in the morning. And she gets this idea yeah. to have all the kids in class write down their I can'ts on a sheet of paper. And then she decorates the paper shredder to have this big mouth yeah. where the paper goes in. And then they take all their I can'ts and they come up one at a time and they shred them. And then they have to make a list of all the things they can do. And they have a big party and there's a funeral for the, I, for, yeah. you know, I can't and so forth. And, and then we have a bunch of discussion topics and also activities that parents can do and teachers can do with kids. Like an I can't funeral, you can have. I would love to hear, but we, Jeff, we got to go to break. Got to go to break. That. I want to hear that that process for the parents and the children because I think it's so important that goes together. And I can't. We're sure. going to come back from the break. That we're going to dive into that. You're you listening. It, to, you're listening to Jack Canfield. We're talking about developing a I can mindset. We got to go to break and a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back after the break. All right, you're clear. Give me just a minute to say it. Okay, we'll let you know. Great, Jack. That was awesome. So you want to cover the process for the second segment? We'll cover. Yeah, let, let, let's talk about the IKEA funeral, and then um, we'll, we'll we'll go off on other things. We can talk. That'll about be perfect. Tomorrow. So we're gonna go. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Seventeen minutes. Second segment. Uh, if you want seventeen for the second, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, because we with seventeen, seventeen, sixteen, right? Uh, normally right. there's 16, 16, 16, but if you want, that's fine. No, it's okay. We're good. All right. We'll do 16. It's good. All right. We're ready to roll. As soon as this is saving, I'll give you a countdown. We're ready. As soon as this is finished, it's saving. I'll give you a count. Okay. Well, sorry. Yeah, that's right. You have to download it. Yep. Well, wow, Jack, this is great. I can't wait to uh, read the book. I, uh, I'm a big fan of mindset, and I think it's so important. Uh, well, I have a nonprofit called Empowered Fathers in Action, and it's all about oh. helping families to build interdependent family structures free from limiting beliefs. So parents, if they're able to recognize their own limiting beliefs, they can learn to be better examples for their children, because obviously children uh, learn from what they observe. So That's yeah. so cool. Right, yeah. You're ready. Love this. All right, here we All go. All right, we're ready. All right, in five, four, three. Well, welcome back to Sustainable Success. We're here with Jack Canfield. We are talking about developing a I can mindset. So again, this is really important for you, not only as business owners, business leaders, or as adults, but also for your families. This is such a critical topic that is so important if we're going to build future leaders in our homes, our communities, and in our businesses. And Jack has just really shared kind of a little about, about the backstory about, you know, what's really happening in this particular area, again, from limiting beliefs. And he's going to share with you now some of the insights to the process, uh, how adults and, and children can really learn to adopt a, a better way of thinking uh, from, from a, a mindset that actually, you know, uh, you know, operates to grow rather than be stagnant. So, Jack, if, if you could share with the audience a little bit about the process that you do uh, from the book and some of the concepts of how people can make these shifts, both parents, adults, and children. Yeah, so one of the things we ask parents and teachers to do with their kids is to have what we call an I can't funeral. And so you make a list of all your I can'ts. And I encourage the parents to do this along with their kids. And so everybody does it as a family or a classroom. We've done it with corporate offices, you know, sales teams, et cetera. And once you have your list, 
then we're going to somehow destroy that list. We can cut it up. We can crumple it up and throw it in a wastebasket. We can burn it up. You know, we can bury it in the backyard, which is what I did with my kids. We literally <laughs> dug a hole and buried all our icants. And then we have a funeral, which is like, it, I won't do the whole eulogy, but it goes something like, you know, today we're gathered here to celebrate, you know, the life of Icant. Uh, he was lived in many places, at state capitals, even heard in the White House and the Congress. But today he's survived by his cousins called I Can, I Will, and I'll Try. And we go on to talk about, you know, all of that. And then we have a ritual where we, you know, put our hands over and do a little prayer. And then we'll have a juice boxes for the kids or whatever. If it's adults, maybe we'll even do wine or something. But the idea is like a funeral and a wake. And then what we do, you have to make a list of all the things you said I can't. You then make a list of I can. And then what we have kids and adults do, and I do this in my trainings as well, is we'll have someone come up on stage. And I'm gonna put one of their arms out to the side. And then I'll push down on it, tell them to resist. And their arm is strong. We find out how strong it is. Then I have them say, I can't do something. Like I can't play the piano or whatever. And their arm goes weak when I push down. Always happens. Then I'll say, I have them say, I can play the piano. And their arm is strong. Now, even if they've never played the piano, they still have the ability to learn to play the piano. Yeah. And so they see that every time they say, I can't, they're weakening their, their neuromuscular system. Their brain is being conditioned to believe they can't, et cetera. And so then when we have a list of I cans, we now create affirmations. What is it you want to be able to do? Well, I can do a cartwheel. I can try out for the football team and make the team. I can become the top salesman in my company. I can earn a million dollars a year, whatever it might be. And then we have the kids or, and adults, you know, put those on three by five cards, put them on the mirror in their bathroom, on your refrigerator. And every morning, say that affirmation and visualize doing the thing you think you want to do. Because what we know is the mind cannot tell the difference between a real event and a vividly imagined event. Uh, but basically all the same muscles will twitch. If you imagine skiing down a mountain as if you were actually skiing down a mountain. I remember reading one year at the military Academy at West point after football practice, they'd have the entire team come in, lie down on the floor in the gym. And then over a big, you know, one of those uh, megaphones, they would call out a play number and everybody had to visualize doing their, you know, assignment perfectly blocking that guy catching the ball whatever it was and and they did really really well that year they usually use they usually lose to navy unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> but that year they did well um but the point is we can literally build our belief and i can by mentally rehearsing the thing we want to do because in our mind we actually did it and the more we do that and rehearse it the more it's like we've done it there's a story about the 1983 um it was the uh, teams that had the sailing, I um, forget the name of the competition now, but the Australians and the Americans and the Brits, they get together and have this big sailing contest. Oh, yeah, and yeah. They, yeah, and, and, the, uh, and the Americans had never won. And so one year, the coach of the American team made a video, uh, audio tape, it was back in the days of cassettes, and it had a, a description of the race, like a narrator going in there, the American teams ahead by two boat lengths as they go around the buoy and stuff. And they narrated the whole race with the Americans winning. He had them listen to that every day, twice a day for over two years. And that next year, the Americans won. First time they'd won, beat the Australians. So the reality is we can do that. Basketball, there's actually research at universities. If you visualize making foul shots for about 10 minutes a day, you will actually get better than people that actually practice for a half hour a day. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is our, our mind, it's all, it's all mind game. It's a mindset, yeah. as you said. And we can train our mind with affirmations, the words we say, what we surround ourselves with, and also uh, visualization. And then the music you listen to. You know, I have a I Can playlist of all the songs that basically, you know, say it's possible, we're overcoming, we are the champions, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, so you are responsible and you can do that for yourself and you can do it for your kids. Wow, that's so powerful. I love that. And one of the things I picked up what you were talking about there is is the consistency it, and that yes. is that it would talk, can you talk a little bit about consistency i think a lot of times people when they're looking at you know mindset or even anything in self-development or personal development they think okay if i do it for you know maybe a certain period of time and things start to get better then i'm then everything's good but they're not consistent they, they it's not a, a, a lifestyle change and something that becomes part of their routine so to speak can you talk no. about how important that can be when it comes to what you're discussing here with children and adults when it comes to mindset? Yeah. Consistency is important because the culture we live in is a negative culture. 
Mm. You know, the only news we ever see is the negative news. You know, we have a positive news story today. You might get one of those, you know, <laughs> and the rest of them are the wars, the rapes, the pillage, the racism, you know, whatever's happening that's not good. And so we are bombarded with negativity. And we have a lot of us grew up in negativity. I did in my family. My dad thought anyone who made money was evil. You know, he was a, a union guy, as it were. And so it, it took me a long time to learn it was okay to make money. It's okay to be rich, okay to be wealthy. Um, I like what Bob Proctor says about it. You know, if you're poor, the only good you can do is right in the, your immediate vicinity. But if you're wealthy, you can build schools in Africa. You can solve problems yeah. in India, you know, whatever. So uh, that was important to me to, to, to get rid of that limiting belief for sure. W. Clement Stone, who was my mentor, had us all carry around a $100 bill in our pocket at all times. Never spend it. So whenever you go into your pocket, you can never say I'm broke or I'm poor. You'd always have 100 bucks. And when you're making like $200 a month, which I was at the time way back in the 1970s, that was a big deal. And then he made us go down to the uh, commodities exchange where all these guys are coming out and getting their limos at the end of the day and thank all these people for being wealthy. Thank you for being wealthy and being a model of what's possible. It was so embarrassing, but we did it. <laughs> <laughs> but it really changed our mindset, you know. Now, another thing you can do, I learned from the Kennedy family. You know, all the Kennedys grew up to be presidents and senators and, you know, attorney generals and so forth. And what they did every night at dinner, Papa Joe would have the kids go around and say, one thing you learned today, one success you had today, and one thing you did for somebody else today. So all those kids basically had to all day long, they're looking for what am I learning? What can I do to serve somebody else? And where can I have a success? Because I'm going to have to talk about it at dinner tonight. So he was pre-programming them to always be focusing on building their self-esteem, their sense of obligation to be of service, et cetera. So we developed that into what we call dinner table topics, where you ask kids like that, what did you learn today? What's one thing you're proud of today? What, what did you accomplish today? And at first you have to kind of pry it out of them because they don't think they did that much. The fact they got up and went to school, that they got to be on their spelling test, that they, you know, tried out for the team, that they got home on time, whatever. Little by little, those grow day by day by day by day. And we know from the research now that you built to, to build a new mental habit takes about 66 days. That's the sweet spot. We always recommend somebody do something for three months without interruption. That means if you miss one day, the next day is day one again. Mm -hmm. And if you do that long enough, your brain gets reprogrammed. And, you know, we've all heard of people that go to a workshop or they come home and their wife says, what happened to you? You're different. You know, so we want to be that person that grows. It's possible to become the person you want to be and to have your kids transform. We've all seen the kids that are adopted, maybe, you know, from foster homes and they go into a good family where the parents love them and support them and do all the positive things. And the kids grow up to be doctors and lawyers and engineers. And so we know it's possible to change the mindset. Wow, that's so powerful. And it, you know, like you said, it, it's, it, is, it is possible. I love the, the thing you talked about, the quote you said from Muhammad Ali. And, and it's so true. I mean, I look at myself where I was over 20 years ago. I was a recovering codependent, a perfectionist, you know, a passive aggressive in my behavior, in my communication, always the, you know, the pessimist, always looking at the bad. But, you know, when I changed that way of thinking, it was just like it didn't happen overnight. It was a process. It, it's like right. we have to unlearn and undo these patterns that, you know, because that's what I was a product of. I grew up in a dysfunctional home and and, sure. you know, this is what we learn. What would, could you say to, you know, adults that maybe they, they, they grew up in a dysfunctional home? They've 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 started to achieve some success, maybe for the first time, whatever that means to them. And they have children now. And, and are they going to repeat those same patterns that their father, their mother, or both, you know, did to them, not doing it intentionally? What could be some things that they can be aware of to kind of start begin to break those patterns? Like, I know you talked a little bit about a, a lot of the things you're doing right now and with, with families and so forth. But what would be some, what would be that, that first step that you could recommend? Well, the first step is to realize that you can't change just to know that that's possible and to make a commitment that you want to and to have an intention. I've been teaching something I learned uh, recently to all the groups I work with, which is to start every day with, I intend to achieve a state of fundamental well-being. So just that intention. 
And so what happened to do it right before you go to bed again. So you're basically telling yourself, this mm. is possible. I'm going to do that. I'm committed to it. And then you've got to find a set of practices. And there are a million practices you can do. You can practice um, affirmations, uh, all the limiting beliefs you have. What's the opposite of that? Start inputting that belief in there. And at first, it'll sound weird. You know, uh, I'm a lovable person. Yeah, right. You know, everyone rejects me. They laugh at me at work. You know, you're going to all that negative stuff's going to come up. And just say, thank you for sharing. And then continue the affirmation because you have to like stop listening to that limiting voice. If you do it long enough, it will be, it will, it will, it will outcome the, what's what it will overcome yes. the other voice, but it takes a while. It takes commitment. And so commitment is required. Repetition is required. I would say again, you know, read something uplifting every day, you know, mm read things about people who've accomplished, you know, Oprah Winfrey was uh, sexually abused as a child and she had a lot of negative things that happened to her. She was fired yeah. from her first job for, they told her, you, you don't know how to interview people, which is fairly interesting when you think about it, what she's done for a living, but she overcame that. Why? Because she practiced that affirmation. She chose to believe in herself. She practiced these kind of techniques, uh, learning to meditate. Very, very mm -hmm. valuable because as you begin to see these negative thoughts, you're learning to witness them. Like right now, you're not aware of what you're feeling in your right foot. But as soon as I say it, you're aware of what you're feeling in your right foot. So the question becomes, who's aware? Well, there's this thing called awareness. And right now, if I asked you, what are you thinking? You could tell me because some part of you is aware of what you're thinking. Yeah. And when you're meditating, everyone says, well, I can't stop the thoughts. Well, that's true. You can't. But what you can do is start observing them. It's like I say, there's a boat going by. Don't get in the boat. Just watch the boat go by. And you begin to realize, oh, that's just a belief. That's just something my father believed. Now, it takes a while to do that. But every day, if you meditated for 20 minutes, let's say, just focus on your breath and notice the thoughts. Don't get caught up in them. Bring yourself back to the breath. Notice what the thoughts create in terms of feelings. That's a critical, critical tool that I think everybody can learn to do. And then, um, as I said, read something uplifting every day. Uh, there's lots of quote books you can buy and maybe get, take one quote, read it, close your eyes and actually contemplate it for a minute. You know, uh, the one, one of the quotes has meant a lot to me lately is everything in the universe is happening for me, not to me. Mm. So if the pandemic's happening for me, not to me, then I have to think about, well, how is that so? Well, for me, who couldn't do live groups anymore, all of a sudden we had to pivot to online. But now I get people from 47 countries attending my Zoom calls who couldn't have got on a plane, couldn't have afforded to come to the United States, would never have done it. They're now getting benefit from my work and we're getting income from their benefits. So there's always something happening for you if you look for it. And so any, what I'm saying is pick any quote, like, you know, I'm possible instead of impossible. And uh, you can go to online, just look up inspirational quotes, copy down 10 of them a week, focus on them. It'll change your mindset, but you have to put in the time. It, it's something that you can definitely do. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think, you know, what you talked about meditation, uh, I know meditation and journaling is something I do every day. And I always advocate to a lot of my clients because, you know, it really helps you to really kind of observe from a third party perspective, like what could be limiting you? What could be getting in the way? Why did it, why am I behaving a certain way? And what can I do to change that? And, mm -hmm. and, and the consistency is so important. I think it's so, so, so critical what you just shared. So would you say that we got a, about a minute left in the, until the, until the next commercial break, if you, could you summarize, a, you know, again, some of the key points that we, that you discussed about, again, this, this whole process and, you know, so that people could really start to like, not only did they hear it, but now someone can actually walk away and take that first step to start implementing in their life. Well, again, it, you got to change your thinking. You got to visualize yourself being successful, being lovable, being, you know, accomplishing the things you want so that your mind can begin to wrap its head around it, to put it, you know, bluntly. And it, you got to put in consistent time. What I recommend is I call it the hour of power every morning 20 minutes of meditation, 20 minutes of reading something uplifting, 20 minutes of being grateful. Uh, and, you know, gratitude exercises and, and journal writing you talked about, exercise, find a morning routine that's going to start Love your day that. positively, visualize the day the way you want it to go. 
so you see the positive outcomes you want rather than worrying about, oh, I won't find a parking space. Everyone's going to get mad at me at work. Visualize the outcomes you want. And then at the end of the day, go back over the day and be grateful for all the things that worked. That Just starting that gratitude practice will be very helpful as well. Wow. Great, great insight. I hope everyone that's listening here is taking notes. Again, this is some great insight from Jack Canfield. Again, having a routine and again, being consistent and committed to the process. So, so important. We got to go to break, but we got more to come from Jack. We'll be right back after the break. All right, you're clear. All right, perfect. Jack, that was great. Oh, got some great insight from that from you. Good. Um, for the third segment, this will be our last segment. We'll, we're going to go 16 minutes. We'll what I'll do is I'll leave, we'll go like about 13 minutes, maybe we can leave the last three minutes where if you want to talk a little bit about, you know, the book, uh, where people can get the book or any uh, of your online programs sure. that you want to put out there to people where to, you know, where to contact you and that type of thing, right. or your, your organization. And then it just leaves me 30 seconds to close out the show from there. Okay. Great. Do you want to talk about in the last segment, the last 13 minutes, you want to talk a little more insight on the book, maybe the story a little bit, or what, what's, what, well, what's, I think, yeah. I think what we should do is like, you know, I'll talk about just remind people they can get it on amazon.com Yep. talk about, they can get a 10 free, a free 10 day course from me. Yep. Uh, go to jackcanfield.com forward slash transformation. Also given when this is going to air, we have a three-day training coming up, a virtual training, uh, April 23rd through 25th. Oh, that'll be perfect. Cause we're in the 15th. So that'll be, yeah, perfect. yeah, yeah. So that'll be perfect. So, um, yeah, we'll just talk about that and what they could expect to get from that. All right. So you want to talk a little bit about the programs and stuff like that? You want to go into that? Yeah. All yeah. Right, the last three minutes. Yeah. All right. Perfect. perfect. We'll do that right now. So I'll let, we'll, we'll give them, give us the countdown and we'll go from there. All yeah. Right. Talk about whatever you want until then, you know, the last three minutes we'll do that. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, here we go. In five, four, three. Welcome back to Sustainable Success. Uh, today's show is being brought to you by Alumni Direct at myalumnidirect.com. Again, we encourage you that if you're looking for a safe place to share and, and collaborate with people perhaps you went to school with, people maybe you don't know, but you went to school with, a great place now to learn from one another and perhaps meet your next uh, business partner or maybe you could be landing your next job. Again, this is going to be a social media platform that, again, provides a wide variety of different services to help you, not only in your career, in your pers personal life, but also in terms of things that can service your family as well. Many affinity programs that are available. Check them out at myalumnidirect.com. Again, we're here with uh, Jack Canfield. Again, if you're joining, just joining us, we, uh, you can listen to this show in its entirety here later today on demand, and we encourage you to listen to the show in its entirety. There is a wealth of information that Jack has shared here, and we encourage you to make sure that you come prepared with a notebook and write a lot of stuff down here. So Jack, you had shared so much insight about the process of you know, overcoming limiting beliefs, developing a routine, being consistent with changing the way we think to achieve success in our lives, and especially doing this for our children to help build them into you know, the future leaders in our society. Talk, if you could talk a little bit about some things that, you know, other things that people should be looking into and investing in, so to speak. I know there's personal development. You've been involved in it for many, many years. And talk about how that can play an important role in helping people to really start to make these changes, that it's not once in a while, but it's being consistent and finding some resources that can help people do that. Well, you know, I always tell people you should take a couple of workshops a year. And some people they say, well, I took a Tony Robbins workshop five years ago, you know, and like they did it, you know, and I say, well, really, that you filled your car with gas once that's going to get you through the rest <laughs> of your life. You know, uh, I think it was Lou Holtz, who was the head of the Notre Dame football team, national champion a couple of times said, you know, uh, motivation is like a shower, you know, it wears off, you know, you have to get a, <laughs> take another one again, you know. Um, but I think that the, what happens is for a lot of people is they don't realize this is an ongoing process. We talk about something called can I constant and never ending improvement. Mm. And the idea is, you know, I've taken over 600 workshops in my life. Now, granted, this is my profession. But even so, I remember the first year when I learned about this stuff, I was in my 20s. 
And I took 32 weekend workshops. It's like I'd come out of the desert and I was hungry, you know, for this kind of stuff. Cause I grew up in a family where emotions weren't talked about, people were negative and so forth. And I, when I took the first one, I went, well, I want more. And so I met this guy named W. Clement Stone. He was a self made multimillionaire worth $500 million. And he started teaching me these principles of success. And he said, go take workshops you know, get involved because we learn more by experiencing things. If I gave you a lecture on swimming, you're not going to be a better swimmer. If I gave you a lecture on all the different kinds of water, salt water, pool water, you know, chlorinated water, you still wouldn't be a swimmer. You got to get in the pool and start splashing around and kicking and stuff before you learn to swim. So I think that, you know, having a coach is another great way to play. There's a ton of coaches out there today. You can do coaching, group coaching, online coaching, et cetera. I think having mentors is a really good way to go. People who've been where you want to go, who can teach you, you know, if I go to Africa, I want a guide. I want to know where the uh, lions are, where the hippopotamuses are, where I shouldn't go, you know? And so the same thing's true when you're, when you're doing this and someone to teach you meditation and someone to teach you, you know, something for your body, whether it's yoga or Pilates or, you know, whatever it might be a uh, dance class, you know, Zumba, something you gotta, you gotta work on your body and your mind as well. So I think that, you know, for me, I, as I said, I take a lot of workshops. I've learned tapping. Here's the big thing. What, what stops us a lot is fear. Mm -hmm. And so we now have a technique called EFT, emotional freedom technique tapping. And you can tap on nine acupuncture points on your body as you think of the thing you're afraid of. And within about five minutes, the fear disappears. It literally disappears. You don't have it anymore. And so I, I do this with people all the time people that are afraid to get in a swimming pool. 10 minutes later, I got them in a swimming pool. They don't want to get in the raft. We're doing this outward bound thing. And I go over, we tap, and now they get in their raft and they go down the river and have a great day. And so the reality is there's no excuse anymore. Everything exists that you need to help you break through, but you have to be consistent and you have to set a time every day where you're going to work on yourself. Just like you go to the gym, you need to go to the mind gym. And so, like you said, journal writing, gratitude exercises, um, you know, uh, affirmations, visualizations, meditation, reading something uplifting, whatever it might be, find that time every day. Is it going to be from seven to eight in the morning? Like right now, my meditation practice is an hour. I used to do 20 minutes, but I upped it recently for a bunch of reasons. It's working. I feel a lot better. <laughs> and, and, you know, I do an exercise at the end of the day where I say, where was I? I take a quality every month. What do I want to be more? I want to be more assertive. I want to be more gentle. I want to be more generous. I want to be kind. And so every day, at the end of the day, I, I close my eyes and say, show me where I could have been more generous today. And all of a sudden, I get all these memories of where I was stingy or I was trying to push ahead in line or whatever it was. And then you replay it the way you would have liked to have done it. And that puts a new blueprint in the mind. When I find myself in that situation again, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. You look at every great teacher. John Maxwell writes for an hour a day, reads for an hour a day. One of the great you know, leadership trainers yeah. in America right now. And all these books that come out like eight minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the morning, you know, those books they are all about this kind of stuff. I wrote the foreword to two books last year. Uh, one was called uh, Homeless to Billionaire. It was by a billionaire named Andres Pira, who saw the movie The Secret, fell in love with me in that movie, read my book, The Success Principles, applied everything from age 19. By the time he was 35, within 15 years, he was a triple billionaire. Another book was called The Billionaire Secret by a guy named Raphael Badziag, who's a friend of mine. And he interviewed 21 billionaires looking for what's common among them. Three things they found. They found a lot of stuff, but three blew me away. Every one of them meditated. Every one of them got up before five in the morning. And every one of them read for at least an hour. So if this is what billionaires are doing, we should all be doing that. They're leaving, you know, as Tony Robbins says, <laughs> success leaves clues, right? Study the people that are being successful. Um, so set aside a time where you're going to work on yourself and do that, you know, and, you know, we do it for our body. We go to the gym, we play racquetball, we lift weights, we do push ups. whatever. We need to do it for our mind as well. Um, the other thing is, you know, when you're running or driving to work, listen to something uplifting. All these audio books, there's your radio show, there's podcasts, there's books on tape, etc. Surround yourself. You know, if you can't be around positive people in person, at least surround yourself with them, you know, through the Internet, through books, through radio shows like yours and so forth. Make that part of your life. Wow, that's such a great you, you, you laid out so many great resources 
Jack. And that's what, you know, you know, why people, you know, that are so successful, like yourself, you're, you're, you're resourceful. And we're the example of everything that we, we provide, we live, you know, we, we walk the talk, so to speak. And it's so true, you know, again, you know, doing those things that people always fight, well, I couldn't get up at that time. And I didn't have time to read. I don't have time to do this. It's just, again, well, but then why are you complaining? You don't have this, or you can't do this and so on. It, it, only those things are going to change when you make these other changes in your life. Well, th think about this, Chris, everyone that says I don't have time. The research shows that the average American spends six hours a day watching TV or surfing the internet mindlessly. Yes. It's six hours. Yeah. Six yes. hours. You don't have time. Well, if you got time to watch The Bachelor, if you have time to watch, <laughs> you know, Game of Thrones, whatever, the reality is you have time. You're just not spending it intelligently. W. Clement Stone, my mentor, called the TV the income reduction box. Oh, he said, yeah. while, you, while you're watching television, you're watching people get rich while you're not. You know, you're not exercising. You're not making sales calls. You're not reading things. You're not uplifting yourself. So I'm not against TV. You know, I watched the uh, playoff game of the NCAA the other night, you know, when Gonzaga oh, yeah. lost to uh, <laughs> Baylor. But, you know, certainly that's fun. But if you're, if you're addicted to it, as some people are, it's, you know, uh, that's, that's not going to get you where you want to go. I think also um, the idea is that we have to be, well, I'm just going to repeat myself, but we have to be disciplined. And one of the things is schedule. Schedule it into your computer like i work with uh, you know google calendar yeah it's on my schedule if you were to open my calendar right now you'll see seven to eight meditation and so if it's there i do it if i don't put it there i, I end up not doing it most people work from a to-do list not a calendar we know that's not successful sustainable success which is a, you know your show for success to be sustainable it has to be ongoing it has to be reinforced it has to be you know we have to feed it and we have to, I think w, w, Napoleon Hill, who wrote Think and Grow Rich, said, think of motivation like a fire. If you don't keep putting logs in, the fire goes out. So we've got to keep feeding the fire to keep ourselves in a positive state. That's required. And there's so many resources available. Uh, this is an interesting fact, because I know you talk about fathers and, and children. There's a book called The Read Aloud Handbook. I don't know if you ever saw that. But what they found, this was a journalist, he found that parents who read aloud to their young children every day, they grow up healthier, they don't do as many drugs, they graduate from school, they get, they get higher degrees, their marriages are better, they get sick less often. Everything you want that's a positive uh, statistic is improved by reading to your children out loud. So I read this book, I Can't Believe in Myself, to my eight-year-old grandson just a couple of weeks ago. You know, and I read it over and he likes to be, you know, how kids are. They want to read the same story several times. Yes. So I go and I read it to him several times. And now if I change one word, he goes, that's not how it goes. <laughs> and so basically repetition is the key to all learning. Wow. That's this is wonderful. Again, I hope that everyone that's listening is taking notes. Again, this is so important. If you don't have a routine, you don't have certain structure, you don't have goals set each day. Again, there's still time. There's always time. You got to value the time and make the time. As Jack mentioned, a lot of times we're caught up, we're busy, but not productive. And we're caught up in things on social media notifications or checking emails that don't matter. Focus on the things that really do matter. And you can't give what you don't have. So fill up your cup so that you could help fill somebody else's through your example. So, so true. Jack, we have about like less than four minutes left in the show. Um, and I really wanted to spend this time to get, let people know about some of the things that you're working on right now, not only with the book, I wanna let people know where they can find the book. Also some of the online programs that you are that you have one coming up here next week. I'd like you to share with the, the, the group, uh, the audience listening, sure. those listening, where they can access this information and get in touch with these resources. Well, the new children's book is I Can Believe in Myself. It's by myself and Miriam Laundry. You can go to Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, anywhere they sell books. And I really encourage you to do it. And, and my experience is if you don't do it right away, you won't do it at all. So, you know, as soon as the show's over, do it. Go to Amazon.com. I Can Believe in Myself. And I would also recommend my book, The Success Principles, How to Get from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be for Adults. It's 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 literally kind of some people refer to it as the white Bible because it's a white book. It's got my picture on the front, but it's 64 principles of success that'll get you where you want to go. It's like taking 
50 workshops. You just do one chapter a week and do it. And I swear to God, your life will change. And then uh, we, if you go to my website, jackcanfield.com, C-A-N-F-I-E-L-D, jackcanfield.com, just put a forward slash transformation after that. And you can download, it'll, it'll send you every day to your computer, your cell phone, your iPad, whatever, a three minute video about a principle, like 100% responsibility, goal setting, visualization, all these things we talk about. So you can actually learn it and do it. And it'll give you a homework assignment for the day to integrate that into your day. And if you'd like to really go deep, uh, April 23rd to 25th, we're doing a three-day online virtual training. It'll be from eight in the morning till six at night, except on the last day till four. And uh, we already have about 500 people signed up from over 40 countries. And I'm going to be taking you through a, a workshop. It'll literally transform. Think of it as a car wash for yourself. It will literally help you. We'll, we'll identify some limiting beliefs. We'll dissolve those and replace them with positive beliefs. You'll end up with a goal that we call it a breakthrough goal that will quantum leap your life. You'll have an affirmation and a practice visualization for that. We'll show you how to use mastermind groups so you can actually have support and an accountability partner to keep it going. And we'll tell you all the things you need to do to make that goal come true, to get rid of the limiters. That are, we're all limited by things. And how can we eliminate the limiters, if you will, the considerations, the fears, the roadblocks that show up and persevere? And then that, that's pretty much it. So to go to, wow, if you wow. want to do that one, just go to breakthrough to success.com, breakthrough to success.com or Jack Canfield forward slash transformation for the 10 day free program. Wow. Wow. Everybody listening and those that will be listening later, take advantage of this. There's a wealth of information. Jack has been doing this for a long time. He knows what he's talking about. Absorb this information, become, let, allow him to be the example for you to do for yourself. We encourage you to check everything out that he shared. We'll make sure that we'll put that in the uh, radio show notes as well so that you'll be able to access that information. Jack, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule today to, to share with us your wisdom here at Sustainable Success. We are honored to have you here. And again, guests, we thank you each and every week coming uh, here every Thursday to, you know, to get your daily dose or your weekly dose, whatever that may be for the words of wisdom from our experts that share from their experience to help you help yourself get to the next level. Till then, we'll see you next Thursday from 12 to 1 East Coast time, 9 to 10 Pacific Standard Time. Have a great day, everyone. All right, you're clear, gentlemen. Great job. All right, beautiful. All right, Jack, good. thank you we'll so much. No, that was fun, Chris. No problem. Oh, thank you. I'll make sure that um, that Lindsay um, will get uh, all the details for the promo stuff, and we'll we'll put it out there. We'll be promoting it, and uh, and I'll make sure that the the actual show link when it runs Thursday, I'll make sure to send it to her so you'll have it. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. All right, <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, you're doing good work. Keep it up, buddy. I will. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye.